In today's video, I'll be making ethanol through the process of fermentation of yeast. This run will also serve as a baseline for future projects that will involve culturing and cultivation of wild yeast, which then I'll also use to make more ethanol. I figured I would start with a good control test though. Throughout the video, I'll be going over more in depth of the process that happens when yeast is fermented, though let's just go ahead and get started. The first thing we'll need to do is sterilize all the equipment used in this process. We will do this with sodium metabisulfate. It's pretty cheap to buy and lasts for a long time so you'll probably only ever need to buy it once or twice. To make the sanitizing solution, just add in around 10 grams of sodium metabisulfate followed by 500 milliliters of distilled water. This does need to be done in a plastic or glass jar, and metal is not recommended to store sodium metabisulfate for long periods. After shaking the solution a little bit, I will clean all of the equipment that's being used in this project. This includes things like the fermentation jug, funnels, corks, pans, stirring spoons, and any other dishes that I may use. The main purpose of this is to kill the bacteria on the surface of the items so that no bacteria are involved in the fermentation other than the yeast I use. Afterwards, I dispose of all the sodium metabisulfate in a plastic container and label it so I know it's just not wastewater. Now for more of a fun part. I have to make a solution of sugar and water for the purpose of giving the yeast sugar to ferment into alcohol. This process is called making a sugar wash and it is by far the most simple way to give yeast a nutrient source. We will start by adding sugar into a pan. For every liter or about quarter gallon, we will add in half a pound of sugar. In total, I used 945 grams of sugar for the total volume of 400 milliliters of water. Once everything is weighed out, I put my pot of sugar on an electric burner. Before turning it on, I add in just about a half of the total water that is needed. It isn't really an exact amount, it just needs to be enough for all the sugar to fully dissolve. I then turn on the heat and start stirring the sugar water. Slowly the water becomes cloudy, and to make all the sugar completely dissolve, we need to heat the water up to around 130 degrees Fahrenheit. This is due to the general rule that substances are more soluble in hot water than in cold. After a while of stirring and waiting, everything clears up, but I still see some undissolved sugar at the bottom, so I continue to stir until I hit around 130 degrees. But before using the sugar water, I have to get it down to around 80 degrees Fahrenheit so I can mix it with the yeast and not harm it. And if it is too hot, it will kill the yeast on contact. So I cover the pot with wrap and let it cool down slowly. In retrospect, I should have probably just dumped it in an ice pack to cool down quickly, but it was all the same in the end. Once everything cooled down, I added the sugar wash into my gallon jug, followed by rinsing my glass container that I used with a little distilled water, followed by adding that in too. Now we are able to start the yeast. For this, we will just need some slightly warm water and some packets of store-bought yeast. The yeast that I'm specifically using is EC118 from Lalvin. This is a high alcohol wine yeast and it is often used by first time brewers. I start by just adding about 250 milliliters of distilled water into a beaker, followed by temping the water to make sure it is warm enough to start the yeast. For the 250 milliliters of water, I use two packets of yeast. Now I just let it sit for about 20 minutes before testing the yeast to make sure it is alive. The way we do this is just add in a small amount of sugar and look for bubbling in the yeast. This will confirm fermentation is happening. When I did this though, I didn't see much bubbling and I was worried that I might have gotten some dead yeast, but I continued anyway with pretty high hopes. To start off, I top off the sugar wash with about a thousand milliliters of distilled water before adding in my now hopefully active yeast. And again, I rinse the container with water, followed by adding that into the jug as well. After that, I cork the jug and shake it all together to get everything to mix fully. Once the yeast starts the fermentation process, it is recommended to keep the jug in one place without disturbing it. Fermentation begins with the breakdown of sugars by yeast to form peruviate molecules, which is also known as glycolysis. Glycolysis of glucose molecules then produces two molecules of peruvic acid. The two molecules of peruvic acid are then reduced to two molecules of ethanol and two CO2 molecules. 
After 49 days, I unwrapped the jug and it resembled champagne or beer. I was able to track the bubbling from my airlock every 24 hours to make a nice graph showing its progression. In the beginning, almost no bubbling happened at all. Then within about a day, everything picked up. Eventually, the bubbling got slower and slower until no bubbling occurs at all. As we can see on the graph, during the first few days, the bubbling was at its highest. After this bubbling, continued to slow down until almost no bubbling happened even after 5 or 10 minutes. Once I was done purifying my alcohol, I came out with around 520 milliliters of ethanol, which I am actually pretty happy about. This represents a yield of about 13% and I was able to purify my alcohol just to around 95% purity. We are able to see that the weights between water and ethanol are known at different temperatures. So, at 15C, my 10 milliliters is coming out to around 0.1825 grams per milliliter. So once again, this is a baseline test for future local yeast I am cultivating. Not all yeast is alcohol tolerant though, and I have been having some trouble finding tolerant strains. I haven't given up though, and I just imagine this could take some time. I have an amazing group of people that help support every video you see. Without being monetized, this great group helps fund my projects, and while this is still just a hobby, I love making these videos and exploring the fun side of a subject that people previously thought was boring. So here are their names. Here's a list of some of my future videos, and until next time, have an amazing day.